All right. Shabbat Shalom, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Justin Chad Brad. I'm going to make a very quick video today. This is just a piece from the upcoming series responding to all the false accusations that are made um, against the first church, the first century church of believers that followed the Bible. And so this part is called Ways of Getting Rid of the Law, Religious Leaders, False Accusations that Yeshua Violated the Sabbath Day. And so over on the left side here, we have Stephen Furtick. He's famous now, uh, infamous on TV and all over the world for saying that Jesus broke the law for us. And he said it pretty passionately. That picture of him over there doesn't really do him justice. He, he was pretty on fire when he was talking about that. And he's even said that he is God Almighty. Um, and in any case, he's just one example of the few preachers, and I say few because most TV preachers are not quite, I don't think they're quite um, on that edge of, of accusing the mass of the universe of violating the law, but Stephen Furtick is, or was. And so in any case, we need to see if we can defend the Savior from all these false accusers. Remember, the accusers in the Bible and the accusers on the TV and Stephen Furtick and from the pulpit today all are in complete agreement, um, and the, according to their findings, if they were correct, the Savior should have been crucified, rejected as the Messiah, and a false prophet. Because the Bible says that anyone who speaks against the law is a false prophet. So, 1 Peter 21 is one example, and there are several other scriptures that tell us that Yeshua is perfect and never transgressed the law, as Romans 7, 7 defines, sin is the transgression of the law, and he never violated the Sabbath day or any law of the Bible. So, the first one we're going to read is 1 Peter 2.21, For you are called to this, for even the Messiah died for our sake, and left us this example that you would walk in his steps. You're going to walk as he walked, as John talks about. He who did no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. Okay, Even Pilate couldn't find anything wrong with Yeshua. Now, Luke 13.14 and the chief of the synagogue answering. So this is the chief of the synagogue answering much displeased on uh, that on the Sabbath Yeshua healed. Okay, he did good on the Sabbath. And said to the multitude, six days there are in which it behooveth us to be working. In these then coming be healed and not on the Sabbath day. Matthew 12 verse 2 verses 10 through 11. Mark 3 1 through 6. Luke 6 7 and 13 chapter 13 verses 10 through 17 and chapter 14 verse 5 and John uh, chapter 7 23 and chapter 9 16 are some of the examples that people have used to say that Yeshua violated the law on the Sabbath day. Yeshua is accused by the religious leaders of today of violating Leviticus 23 3 from Young's literal translation, six days is work done and in the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation you do no work. It is a Sabbath to Jehovah in all of your dwellings. And so they agree this is and was the Sabbath, at least most people do today. The religious leaders in Yeshua's day accused Yeshua of violating the Talmud man-made laws as well. So is it biblically lawful and commanded to do good and heal on the Sabbaths? We're going to look at Isaiah 58, 2 Kings 4, 22-37, and 1 Samuel 9, 12-13. Although in the interest of time, we're not going to be reading through all of these. I'm just going to summarize them because people complain that my videos are too long. So you will be able to read these scriptures on your own. But I have summarized some excerpts from Isaiah 58 here just to make a list of what is commanded to do on the Sabbath day. And this are not, these are not the restrictions. Okay, There are restrictions on the Sabbath day that are in the Bible. And perhaps I should add those to this when I put this in my other presentation. But in any case... John MacArthur, who is a TV preacher, but he's been kind of removed from the spotlight by mainstream because, well, he's he's more in alignment with the truth than Stephen Furtick, I think, I think, just from the limited time I've listened to him. I could be wrong. But John MacArthur rightly said that Stephen Furtick, the heretic, as seen on the left, is disqualified from preaching because he said that Jesus broke the law for us. It is biblically lawful and commanded to good and heal on the Sabbaths. Isaiah 58 says that on the Sabbath day we must, this is from verse 6, loose the bands of wickedness to shake the burdens of the yoke. 
and to send out the oppressed free. In this case, we're going to defend Yeshua from being oppressed by these false religious leaders. And every yoke ye draw off, deal to the hungry thy bread, and the mourning poor bring home, so give them shelter, that thou seest the naked and cover him, and from thine own flesh hide not thyself. Now I will tell you, as far as it's saying to the mourning poor bring home, it also says in the New Covenant that if there's anyone that denies Yeshua as the Messiah, who is not saved in Yeshua, you do not let them in your house. So there, you got to read the whole Bible. Uh, verse 9 says, Turn aside from thy midst the yoke, the sending forth of the finger, a pointing finger, he broke the law, and the speaking of vanity. Bring out to the hungry thy soul, and the afflicted soul thus satisfy. Do not do your own pleasure on the Sabbath day, but call it a delight without doing your own ways and your own pleasure. Okay, which would involve extra biblical uh, festivals and holidays like worshiping Easter or Tammuz or anything like that. You're not supposed to do that on the Sabbath day. Of course, Sunday is not the Sabbath day, but you shouldn't do it that day either. Um, you shouldn't. You shouldn't do evil things. Second Kings four twenty two through thirty seven. It explains that ordinarily Elisha the prophet helped people on the Sabbath day, such as healing, raising people from the dead. But in the case of the woman whose son died, the Shulamite woman, she went after Elisha when it was not the Sabbath day. They're like, hey, this is not the Sabbath day. This is not when he does these things. You know, you shouldn't be going after him. But the, because that was when, on, on the holy days, that's when he did that. Now, we know Elisha followed the example of Elijah, so most likely Elijah did the same thing. Okay, he also probably helped people on the Sabbath. And if we did more research, we can probably find more examples of it. Uh, Samuel was often making sacrifices when people went to him for help. See 1 Samuel 9, 12-13. So most likely he's doing Sabbath day stuff, right? So if Yeshua had refused to heal on the Sabbath, he would have violated Isaiah 58. He would have violated the commandments, the laws, the instructions in the prophets. And so let's continue. So in order to celebrate John MacArthur saying that Stephen Furtick was disqualified because Stephen Furtick said that Jesus broke the law for us, Stephen Furtick made a series called Disqualified where he's bragging on his disqualifications. Here's what happened in the Bible, when, and that's what we call pride again. Like when we go back to Isaiah and they're talking about how the people, brought, they bragged about eating unclean food. Um, they went among the tubes and they said they were holier than other people, right? That's, you know, let's, let's take pride in being disqualified. Let's take pride in sinning. Let's take pride. No. Here's what happened in the Bible. That's the arrogance. Okay. Here's what happened in the Bible when false witnesses accused Yeshua of violating the law in the Bible. Acts chapter 6, verses 13 through 14. Peshit, Holy Bible translated. And they appointed false witnesses who said, This man does not cease speaking words against the written law, okay, and against this holy place. We have heard him say that Yeshua the Nazarene will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses delivered to you. So that tells us that anyone who says that the Savior spoke against the law of Moses or taught against the law of Moses is a false witness. It does not matter if that person is saying that he changed the dietary laws. It doesn't matter if they're saying he violated the Sabbath or changed it. It doesn't matter what their accusation is. If their accusation involves Yeshua speaking against or changing the customs of the law of Moses, or any part of it, one jot or tittle, they are a false prophet. Now it goes on from there because um, in Matthew 7, we're going to see in the rest, they're defined as wolves. So stop listening to false witnesses. They accuse Yeshua of violating the law so that they can get away with violating the law as well. So they can be people pleasers. They can tell people, hey, you can violate the law because the Savior violated the law. But they're lying. Stop lying. The Bible says liars go to hell. And those who teach anyone to violate one of the least of the laws will be least in the kingdom of heaven. So don't do that. And again... I, the word commandments, I don't really see it in the New Covenant. Um, it might be there somewhere, but I see precepts and laws when I look up these words in Aramaic and Greek. Matthew 7.15, Beware of false prophets who come to you in lamb's clothing, but from within they are plundering wolves. Okay, So how are these plundering wolves defined? In Zephaniah chapter 3, it says, Her heads in her midst, starting in verse 3, Her heads in her midst are roaring lions, her judges are evening wolves. They have not gnawn the bone in the morning. Her prophets are unstable. Men of treachery. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have violated the law. Okay. What did they do? They polluted the sanctuary. 
It's like Stephen Furtick and these others. They've polluted the sanctuary. Okay, they need to stop doing that. And I think I got at least one last slide here on this subject. The Sabbath day is for all mankind. It's not just Jews. It's not just biological Israel. I have a relative commented on my last video saying that the law is just for Israel. Passover is just for Israel. No. Mark 2.27 says, And he said to them, The Sabbath was created for the sake of man. Not for the sake of Jews, not for the sake of Israel, not for the sake of Moses or Abraham, but all mankind. For the sake of man and not man for the sake of the Sabbath. Okay? The fourth commandment in the Torah says, Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. You are to work six days and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to Jehovah. In it you shall not do any work. Exodus 28 through 10. In the New Covenant it says in Hebrews 4, 9 through 10, So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of Jehovah. So the Sabbath still remains. For whoever has entered Jehovah's rest has also rested from his works as Jehovah did from his. And somebody said that the New Covenant says, literally says, that the, that the, the Savior is our Sabbath. Well, I know it does say he is our rest, or he is our Sabbath rest, but I don't think there's anywhere in there it says that he is our Sabbath, that the Savior has replaced the Sab Sabbath himself. Um, Paul even talks about this when he says not to let anybody uh, cause us trouble about um, you know keeping the dietary laws. They shouldn't stop us from doing that, or, or making sure we only eat clean foods and drink, and, and, and keeping the new moons and the Sabbaths. Uh, we're supposed to do that and not let anybody bother us about it. And then he goes on to say it's important because these things point to the Savior, they point to Him, okay? So yes, He is our rest, but the the Sabbath points to Him. And it always has. Old Covenant, New Covenant, it's all the same. It all points to Him. And not one jot or tittle of the law shall pass till heaven and earth pass away, okay? Isaiah, Zechariah, Micah, and Isaiah all told us that He's going to beat swords into plowshares when He returns, or we're going to do it. The swords will be beaten into plowshares one way or another. Somebody's going to do it. And he's, he's going to resume all the Old Covenant laws. And people from every nation are going to come and they're going to give him offerings on the Feast of Tabernacles. All of the feasts, all of the, the holy days will be restored. Um, everybody's going to do it. And people that refuse to are going to go without food and water. They're, they're not going to have rain on their land, so they're not going to be able to produce food and water there. And then he's going to kill them if they don't come do that. And anybody who opposes the Savior Yeshua, when he returns, it says that they will be consumed with fire while they're standing on their feet. Okay? So, the, if, you, if you're a hardcore dispensationalist, if you're a hardcore antinomianist, and you oppose the Messiah, you will not listen, you will not be converted, um, then he's going to consume you standing on your feet, as far as I know. If you absolutely will not bend or break, if you're going to remain stiff-necked, and you're opposing him, then um, at least the way I understand the prophets, he's going to come with fire and he's going to consume you while you're standing on your feet. Okay, so you can argue until you're blue in the face that the that the Bible is no longer necessary to follow anymore. But it doesn't matter if you're an atheist, a Christian, what you are. Um, when the Savior returns, you're going to find out. Okay, so you can learn the hard way, um, or you can learn the easy way. Okay, also I'm going to be talking when I do my my this presentation the whole thing sometime i'll talk about blended clothes and uh you know why we wear those it's simply because the bible said I mean, why we don't wear blended clothing simply because the bible says not to do it um we can try to do to explain it as you see in the slides we can try to uh defend it but it doesn't matter because <laughs> you're the creator of the universe told us to do it that's all that matters um, you want to argue with him, you can, and you can wait until he comes back and consumes people with fire uh, that won't follow the law. You can do that if you want to. I, I don't choose to argue with the creator of the universe. I'm not going to lean on my own understanding, but in all my ways I'm going to acknowledge him to the best of my ability with his help and let him direct my paths. That makes much more sense to me than trying to argue against the creator of the universe and his instructions he's given us. So... Anyways, um, I've kept this video short and brief, but if you have not received Yeshua as your personal um, Adonai, Savior, Master, King, Lawmaker, Judge, um, as it says in the Bible in Isaiah 33, 22, if you've not made him your everything and instead you're following the laws and command doctrines of men, you're, you've, you've, you've got another Elohim or no Elohim, maybe you, you're an atheist, I invite you to receive him today because the Savior came and he died on the cross for your sins, okay? 
and uh, he, he was resurrected from the dead. All of the punishment for sin was put on him if you will repent and believe. Okay, if you'll stop walking according to the flesh, if you let him transform you by form you by the power of the Holy Spirit, and you'll stop walking according to the flesh, then you will not be condemned. Okay, there is no condemnation for those in Yeshua Hamashiach who do not walk according to the flesh. So uh, let's praise him for that. And it says, if we confess he is Adonai. And we believe in our hearts that he is Yeshua and he died for us on the cross. And then we confess we've sinned against him. Then he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So let's bow our heads in prayer. Yehovah our Av in heaven, hallowed be your name, your Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Um, we give thanks and praise to you for all good things. And we confess that Yeshua is Adonai. And that you died for us on the cross to forgive us of our sins. And that we have sinned against you. And we ask and praise you and thank you for forgiveness of sins. And for your Holy Spirit to come and dwell within us and make us holy. A spirit of holiness that will make us holy, not unholy. That we would not defend evil works or transgression of the law. Or even accuse you of violating the law. But that we would learn to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Jehovah as you said. As the Savior said in Matthew 4.4 4, and in Luke 4.4. 4. That you turn us up as a good father in the way we should go. That we would not turn to the left or the right. But we would receive life and life more abundantly. In all areas of our life, for us and our children, our children's children, for all generations, and our families and friends and relatives, I pray they receive it too. Everyone throughout the whole planet. And we pray for baptism. We'd all receive baptism in water, and and that we be baptized in the fire of the Holy Spirit. And receive communion and partake in it um, with you, so that we can remember you and what you've done for us on the cross. And I pray everybody would read the scriptures, they would read the entire Bible and all the Gospels, and that they would they would receive the truth from you. Every word to the mouth of Jehovah. In Yeshua Mashiach's my name, and they can be with you in paradise and live with you in heaven forever and ever and receive all good things. And not turn to the left or the right, but remain on the path, the strict and narrow path that leads to you that only if you find. And we thank you and praise you for that, Nishra Mashiach's my name. Thy Av who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation or lawlessness. But delivers from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right. Shabbat shalom to you. If you did not pray that prayer and you need to pray it and still receive it, then I encourage you to rewind the video, go back, listen to the prayer, pray with it, and receive him again. And if you have, hallelujah. Um, we just thank and praise him for all that he's done for us. All right. I hope you've enjoyed the video and that you're having a restful Shabbat shalom. All right.